Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you to visit our store at store.greatdetectives.net. You can pick up all my audiobooks, ebooks, and paperbacks. That's over at store.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date, July the 16th, 1945. And this one is Blackie's Car Kills a Woman. <laughs> mechanic in this garage? Uh, I admit, mister, grease monkey is all grease, no monkey. Well, I think this car of mine could stand some monkeying with. Huh. Can you leave it with me a while? Anything you say. Okay. Just leave it where it is. I'll move it. Thanks. That's your car? Yes. Why do you ask? Oh, no reason. Nice car. Huh? Better give you a claim ticket. What's your name? Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie. Now, you just keep this. If there's nothing serious the matter with your buggy, it ought to be ready for you by noon. Okay, I'll be back in three hours. Well, he's Boston Blackie. Hmm. Police department. Uh, I'd like to speak to the man in charge. Speaking. Uh, Inspector Faraday, this is the West Avenue garage. Well, what do you want me to do? Come down and fix a flat? Look, that car the police told us to look for just turned up here. A black convertible with the left front fender smashed in? Yes, sir. Don't let whoever owns it take it up. Last night, that car killed a woman. Now here's Richard Calmer's Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friends. Wait here at the entrance, Mary. I'll walk into the garage office and see if the car's ready. I know, Blackie. You're ashamed to take me places. <laughs> Think so? Come on along, then. He's talking to you. Well, the three hours are up. My car ready? Oh, you're a boss in Blackie, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure, it's ready. This way. What was the matter with it? Oh, the engine needed a little tuning, that's all. What do I owe you? Uh, three bucks. Okay. Hey, uh, the rest is for you. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Uh, the keys are right in the ignition switch there. Thanks. Get in, Mary. After you, my pet? So long. So long. Hey, mister. Going my way? Depends on which way you're going. Your way. All right, Frankie. Pull over to the curb. Oh, not you. Inspector Faraday, what are you doing in the back of the car? Pull over there, Blackie, and stop. Faraday, stop pointing that gun. It's liable to go off before you go out. What do you want with Blackie, Inspector? You know better than to ask me questions, Miss Wesley. Okay. You have such trouble with the answers, Mary. Now, what's this all about, Faraday? Don't play dumb, Blackie. I caught it from you, only you weren't playing. What is it this time, arson, robbery, or murder? You're taking me down to headquarters, of course. Uh, sorry, Miss Wesley, you'll have to get out. Oh, Inspector Faraday, please, listen to reason. Look. Maybe you'd better do what he says, Mary. Be a good girl. Good for what? Running out on you when you're in trouble? Go on, Miss Wesley, get out. Oh, all right. Uh... Take a taxi home, Mary, and I'll phone you as soon as our non-paying passenger is through with me. Very funny. Yes, but be careful, will you, dear? You mean don't go through any red lights with a policeman in the car? <laughs> all right. Get going, Blanky. Where to, Master? Get going. 
Yes, sir. Bye, Mary. Bye. Which route to headquarters shall I take, Master? None. Drive around the corner and stop. Faraday, do you feel all right? I feel fine. Turn here and stop. You're the boss. Now cut your engine. Alone at last, huh? Now look, this is nothing to make wisecracks about. Sorry. If you want me to get into the proper mood, take the finger you have on me and point out what I've done now. Blanky, last night this car of yours hit and killed Carolyn Forbes. What? It was this car that killed her, Blanky. Witnesses described it perfectly. Faraday, doesn't it occur to you that there are other black convertibles in this town? Yeah, but I don't think you'll find any other with such a peculiar dent on the left front fender. Huh? Get out and take a look. I certainly will. Wait, I'll go out with you. Come on. Well, I suppose you're going to tell me somebody backed into your car last night and smashed this fender. I don't know how it was smashed, Inspector. It hit and killed Carolyn Forbes at 11 o'clock last night. All right, I'll take your word for it. But I wasn't driving my car last night. I know you weren't. Your car was stolen. Sorry, Faraday, my car couldn't have been stolen because I only have one set of car keys and they were in my pocket last night. Well, then the, the, the locks on your car were forced. Sorry for the second time, Faraday. If they had been, I'd have noticed it this morning. Oh, fine. As usual, you have to complicate things. Well, then why don't you simplify them your usual way? Just arrest me and close the case. Oh, no, Blanky. This is one time I know you're not guilty. This was a hit-and-run accident. And if there's one thing I know you wouldn't do, it's run away. Well, my car killed this Forbes girl. And by law, I'm responsible. By law, yes. But I'm only one member of the police force. And what strange meaning is behind that peculiar crack? You've managed to get away from me before. Why don't you get away from me now and find out what this is all about? And become a fugitive from justice? Oh, no. I'd never do a thing as naughty as that. So help me, Blanky. One of these days... All right, Faraday. It'll make you any happier. I'll go get to the bottom of this. But I don't want to take any more orders from you. Why not? I'm head man in this investigation. When I go to the bottom of things, I start at the top. It certainly is a prize turn of events, isn't it, Dan? I suppose there's a certain amount of justice, son. Yeah, yeah, but the justice we're going to get is a funny big amount. We should get an easy million and a half from Sister's will. It was a lucky uh, accident, uh, of course. Uh, it's getting late. We'll be to get ready. Funeral. Oh, Dad, I didn't show any respect for Carolyn when she was alive. Why pretend to respect her now? I'm just as unconcerned about her death as you are, but for appearances' sake, we'd better be funeral. With the money we're coming into, why do we care about appearances? The services won't take long. Uh-huh. How uh, long will it take to get the money? A whole lot longer than it'll take to bury Carolyn. Yes, yes, it would. Yes? Oh, you're both in here. Well, Tom, are you leaving today? Yes, right now. I just came in to say goodbye. Well, Mr. Wellington, now that you can't marry my daughter, what are you going to do for money? Oh, man. To do what, Tom? Find some other girl with money and get yourself engaged to her? Nothing wrong in falling in love with a rich girl, is there, Bill? Not if you can find one who has full control of her fortune. <laughs> you hated her for that, didn't you? Both of them. But you, uh, loved her for it. A fine family you are. Maybe it's just as well Carolyn's did. Even if I'd married her, you two would have made her life miserable. Anybody home? Who's that? It's not a familiar voice. Is anybody home? Uh, someone must have wanted in the front door. It was open. Service in the back. Uh, Bill, you'd better go see who it is. Uh, uh, never mind. I'll... Uh, hey, you. Looking for someone? Yes, yeah, Carol and Forbes family. They're in here. Thanks. Thank what? Sorry to intrude, but it's important. Don't apologize to me. Oh, I care. You've been walking here 20 times a day. Are you Bill Forbes, Carolyn Forbes? No, I'm Bill Forbes. If you've uh, come to see my sister, down at the morgue, she's dead. Yes, I know she's dead. That's why I'm here. What's to you? I'm Boston Blackie. Last we night, don't Mike... know anyone by the name of Boston Blackie, and people we do know are not in the habit of coming into this house unannounced. Good day, sir. You're, uh, Mr. Forbes, aren't you? And I'm ordering you out of my house. He's Mr. Forbes, all right, Blackie. And he's ordering you around to see what it feels like to be able to give orders in his own house. Who are you? I'm Tom Wellington. And he's leaving with you, uh, Blackie. Tom Wellington, huh? You were going to marry Carolyn Forbes, weren't you? We're not in the mood for questions, young man. 
I don't want to have to ask you to leave again. What right have you to come in here and ask us questions? I'm in the mood for my questions, not yours, Bill. If you want to know anything about my daughter's death, go to the police. I have to know more than the police know about your daughter's death, Mr. Forbes, or I'll go to jail for a murder. Murder? I knew it. I knew it was murder. My sister was a conceited, self-centered, selfish fool. If someone murdered her, I'm not surprised. That's fine talk. Maybe the wrong member of the Forbes family was killed. Just what makes you think my daughter was murdered? The police say it was an accident. I have my reasons. What makes you think you have a right to have reasons? Because it was my car that killed her, and I wasn't driving it. Uh -huh. Is that any worry of ours? It may be. If I can prove that either you or your father borrowed my car last night. Why would we do that? To kill Carolyn Forbes. Why would we kill her? For her money. Oh, that's much too simple. We'd be fools to do such an obvious thing. Uh, why not see if there isn't a reason why Tom here might have killed Carolyn? Oh, now, what could I gain? I can't see where you'd gain anything, Mr. Wellington. You're broke, I understand. Just about. You'd stand a profit from Carolyn Forbes only if she lived to marry you. I want to warn you, Mr. Forbes, and your son, too. I'm going to ask the police to investigate both of you. Bill... Take Mr. Boston Blackie to the door. Yes, Father. Come on, get up. Don't bother to show me the way. I can find the door. I wish it was as simple to find your sister's murderer. It's as obvious as a bad joke, Mary. Either the father or Bill, the brother, killed Carolyn Ford. But why, Blackie? For money? Why not? She held the purse string. What about the fiancé? Oh, he had to marry her to get her money. That seems to whitewash him. But, um, was she really going to marry him? Of course. Well, well, how do you know something didn't happen to that romance? Maybe he's already married, and she found out about it. Would he kill her for that? Well, no, but... But nothing. He had no motive. When a rich person is murdered, it's generally for money. That's almost a rule. Well, couldn't this be an exception to the rule? Maybe this Tom Wellington had been running up a lot of bills on the strength of the fact that he was marrying into the Forbes Millions. Then Carolyn found out about it, became angry, and broke the engagement. Look, Mrs. Sherlock Holmes, you're beginning to make sense. And uh, one more thing, Watson. Elementary? Oh, very, very. In all good murder stories, this is back in my own voice, who always turns out to be the real killer? The one who looks the most innocent. And who looks perfectly innocent in the murder of the millionaire? Tom Wellington. But maybe he never read any detective stories. He is it. Yeah. Yes, that may be right, Mary. In fact, I know it's right. Well, see? Wellington was awfully pleased when I accused the elder Forbes and the brother. And what's more, Wellington looked like the weak sister type who'd borrow money from a from a rich girl with no thought of paying it back. Come on. Where are we going? Back to the Forbes mansion. Wellington may still be there, and I... Oh, now what? Yeah. I'll go see what it is. Hello, Miss Wesley. Blackie here. Inspector Faraday, come in. Faraday, I think I have your killer for you. The fiancé, Tom Wellington. Why? Check into his background, and you'll find out he did something Carolyn Forbes didn't like. Then she broke the engagement, and so he killed her. You know, I helped Blackie solve this case, didn't I, do? Yes, you'll have to thank us both for this one, Faraday. Well, I'll thank you both to crawl under a couple of stones. Or find me a killer I can send to jail. Huh? What's the matter? Carolyn Forbes' little private murder has turned into a free-for-all. I've got myself another body. Who? Tom Wellington. What? Wellington? Oh, that's not fair, Blackie. He was supposed to be our killer. How do you like that guy? He never read enough detective stories to be a killer, so he winds up a corpse. And now, back to Boston Black. Carolyn Forbes, wealthy heiress, is fatally injured by someone driving Boston Blackie's car. And all evidence points to deliberate murder. But how the murdered managed to get Blackie's car is a mystery. There's only one set of keys, and it was in Blackie's pocket. After a visit to the dead girl's family, Blackie sees conclusive evidence that the murder was committed by Tom Wellington, her fiancé. But just as Blackie's about to tell Faraday that the case is solved, he receives the news that Wellington, too, is dead. A second victim of murder. As our story continues, Inspector Faraday is explaining to Blackie and Mary Wesley the circumstances of Wellington's death. Yes, Blackie, Tom Wellington's dead. We fished his body out of the river just two hours ago. Look, Faraday, 
Are you sure it was Wellington's body? We got positive identification from somebody who ought to know. Who? His sister, Florence Wellington. Florence Wellington, Inspector? Why, that's the name of the switchboard operator in this building. It's the same girl, too, Miss Wesley. That's why I happen to be up here. Oh, she must be awful. Poor girl. Maybe there's something we can do for her, Mary. Ah, she seems to be okay. She and her brother were anything but palsy wowsy When she uh, identified him in the morgue, it was the first time she'd seen him in two years. Well, but just the same, I think we should do something for her, don't you think so? Yes, I'll go see her. Nobody especially enjoys having a relative murdered. Say, uh, how was he killed, Harney? Well, I'm waiting for a coroner's report on that now. Uh, there, there were no marks on the body. Well, either old man Forbes or Bill Forbes must know something. And I'm going to find out why. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, well, Blackie, you will stop by and see Florence first, won't you? All right. Where is she, Faraday, at headquarters? No, ah, she's at home. I'll see her, but the way she feels about her brother, I don't know whether to offer condolences or uh, congratulations. <laughs> nice of you to come to see me, Blackie, but, but it wasn't necessary. Is there anything you need, Florence? You've done a lot of little favors for me. Maybe I can return now, all wrapped up in one big favor. No, Blackie. Thanks just the same. What have I ever done for you but see that Miss Wesley got everything you left for? Well, if you do need anything, you know where to get in touch with me or with Mary Wesley. She'll do anything she can. Thanks. You're both very nice. Florence, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Well, of course not. You and your brother weren't close at all. Could you tell me the reason? He wanted things I didn't care about, I guess. Money, social position. He, he was ashamed of me because I worked. He drew away from you, then? Yes. I might have ruined his chances of marrying into the Forbes family. Or any other family that had money. Didn't you ever see your brother? Two years ago, I met him on a train. That was the last time we spoke. Oh, I saw him on the street once in a while, but that was all. Did your brother have any enemies, Florence? Why do you ask that? Answer my question first. Suppose everyone is ambitious as Tom has made enemies. But I didn't know any of them. Or his friends either. Do you think anyone hated your brother enough to murder him? No. No, I don't. Think, Florence. Did he ever get in anybody's way uh, financially, socially? I don't know. Well, Tom may have been cruel and selfish, but he didn't deserve to be killed. Well, don't worry, Florence. Whoever killed him will get what he deserves. Well, Mary, first I saw Florence Wellington, and what she knew you could put inside a small zero. Oh, shucks. But what about Mr. Forbes and his son? Did you see them too, Blackie? Uh Uh-huh. And there I got something. Not one confession, but two. Two? Believe it or not, Mary, they both confessed to the murder of Carolyn Forbes and Tom Wellington. Well, Blackie, which one did it, Bill or the father? I don't know. But one of them is guilty. They confessed to protect each other. Obviously. Yes, but which one did it? If I don't find out soon, I'll be Faraday's suspect. It was my car that killed the Forbes girl. But even Inspector Faraday knows you went driving. Say... What Faraday knows is about all a jury would need to convict me. Oh, please, Blackie, be serious, darling. Well, why, this thing is ridiculous. I usually break my neck to find a killer, and the first time I get a voluntary confession, I get two. <laughs> and I don't know which to believe. <laughs> if that's Faraday at the door, tell him we don't want any. Okay, but Blackie, we've got to think of something. I know, but what? Hello, Miss Wesley. Oh, Florence. Come on in. Thanks. Uh, Blackie, it's Florence Wellington. Hello, Florence. Oh, say, you're going somewhere. Yes, yes, I, I am, Blackie. I'm going out to the country for a while. Well, I think you're doing very wise. But I thought it was best to get away. I wouldn't go too far away if I were you, Florence. There may be a great deal of police investigation into your brother's death, you know. Yes, I, I know. Maybe you'd better leave us your address in case you're needed. Well, I really don't know where I'm going yet, but I'll come back soon. You better. Who else can I trust to take care of all the candy and the flowers and all the other wonderful presents I bring to Miss Wesley when she isn't home? Oh, oh, I wondered why you always brought me things when I wasn't home. (laughs) That's so you could stop and talk to Florence, wasn't it? Oh, gee, the secret's out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm leaving town in just 20 minutes, so I'd better hurry. Well, now, look, you you will let us hear from me, won't you? I will. Goodbye. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, and, and thanks for everything. Hmm. That's strange, isn't it? Very. Did she say anything about leaving town when you saw her earlier today? That's what's so strange about it. Blackie, we don't think that... I think worse than that. Is she the one? Oh, of course not. But she's in trouble of some kind. Danger, maybe. She may have been threatened because she knows something. Who killed her brother, maybe? You think she knows that? I think she knows something. I'll call you when I know what it is. Blackie, where are you going? Wherever Florence Wellington is going. And if you remember, she didn't know where that might be. <laughs> Florence. Mikey. Is going to an old brownstone on 117th Street, what you call going to the country? Go away, Blackie, please. You shouldn't have followed me. Now that I know you were lying about going to the country, I know I should have followed you. But I am leaving for the country from here. Florence. Blackie, come down the street with me and I'll... Oh, no. No, no. You're in trouble. And whatever the trouble is, it is in that house. Blackie, please, let's leave. No. I'm going to lean on this doorbell till someone answers. Blackie, please, you'll only... Come on in, Florence. Tom hey. Wellington. Oh, no, you don't close the door on me. <laughs> you fool, why'd you let this guy come She didn't let me in. I got this idea myself. There. Yeah. All right. You're in the door, but that's as far as you're going to get. Tom, please, put away that gun. I'll put it away when I put a couple of slugs into your boyfriend here. Oh, this is certainly a big surprise. Michael Faraday finds out that body in the river wasn't yours. I'll wait. Tom, please, you've done enough harm already. Sir. I'll say you've done enough harm. Who did you kill and dump in the river for your sister to identify as you? I didn't kill anyone. I stole a body from the moor. <laughs> Wait till Faraday hears that. Uh, he's not going to hear it from you. No, uh, you're going to tell him yourself. I'm not telling him anything. Well, uh, will you tell me something? I just do things. I don't talk about it. I'll tell you, Blackie. He killed Carolyn Forbes. Shut up. I suppose you'll say I helped him kill her, Blackie, but I didn't. I he said, made... Shut up. Maybe you'd better not tell me anything, Barnes. Not just yet. But I want to tell you. I gave Tom the keys to your car. You left your keys for Miss Wesley several times, and Tom told me you needed a car badly, for, for business reasons. Shut up, Florence. I made a wax impression of the keys to your car one night when you left them for Miss Wesley, and later had a set of keys made from the impression. Florence, I told you to... Florence, you'd better save the rest for Faraday. There isn't going to be any rest at hell, because, little sister, you're going to rest in peace. Get out of here. Florence, get out of here and take care of this. Let go of me, Black. You're killing you. No, Tom, no. So I admit, it only takes one to... Tom, don't. Keep back, Florence. I'll make him drop his gun. Get away from me, Blackie, or you'll get one of these bullets. Ah! Ah! Oh, now try to tell Blackie the whole story. And tell him how it feels to be full of lead. You don't shoot straight, Wellington, but you shoot often enough to make up for it. Is she dead? She is. I killed two girls in two days and for two different reasons. I know why you killed your sister. Why did you kill Carolyn Forbes? She found out I was running up bills, which I was going to pay when I married her. She was going to call up our engagement and tell her friends why. The phony has found out, huh? I had you tagged from the start. That body you borrowed threw me off the track. Well, you may be on the right track now, but you've come to the end of the line. Yeah, but there's a switch. Oh, I don't think there is. I can do the same to you I did to Florence. Not unless you have another gun. Stay back. I'll shoot you. With what? You saw what this gun did to Florence. I know what it did to Florence. That's why you can't do anything to me with Stay it. Stay back or I'll kill you. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. You think I'm scared? You think I'm scared? I'll show you. What's the matter, Wellington? I... What's the matter? Don't uh... you know how to use a gun? It's me. I don't think so. It's empty. It is empty. That's right, Wellington. That's right. You were so anxious to kill your sister, you forgot to save a bullet for me. You I... dropped that gun, Wellington. I'm I'm gonna you. Me. Well, what do you call it? Uh... I hope you have pleasant dreams, Wellington. You'll need them. Because when you wake up, you're going to be looking at Inspector Faraday. Oh. Blackie, what did Faraday say when he found that the body identified as Tom Wellington had been dead 72 hours? Well, what he usually says in a spot like that, nothing. Oh, did them... Um... Did Wellington confess to Faraday that he killed Carolyn Forbes? He confessed everything, including the fact that his sister made a duplicate of my car keys when I left them here for you. Oh. Well, I suppose that will be the end of that. The end of what? You won't let me borrow your car again and leave the keys with the girl at the desk downstairs. I should say not. Hey, um, let's go for an automobile ride. Now, where did you get that idea? I don't know. Maybe it was auto-suggestion. Oh, oh. 
This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, uh, interesting because it does show Faraday is a little different from uh, so many radio cops who's absolutely predictable because uh, essentially he willfully cuts Boston uh, and Blackie uh, loose to solve it. And I think that's a nice touch and uh, does give Faraday a little bit more... Um, depth than uh, we might think he otherwise has. The solution was uh, made sense. It was kind of an interesting way how Boston Blackie got to it, but however uh, it works. All right, well, that'll actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow. We'll be bringing you yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and then next Thursday, be sure and listen to uh, another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meanwhile, uh, do send your comments, Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become 